Hello, everyone. Welcome to a wonderful session, I'm sure, in prospect for Horasis India Conference. We are here to celebrate India, to talk about India, to bounce back from difficult times. And uh, all of us from various parts of the world with some experience in startups and mentoring startups, varied experiences, I must say, and a very distinguished panel, which I'm sure will uh, do full justice to this uh, mandate that we have uh, on mentoring of Indian startups. And everybody has amazing experience uh, in this field. So I'm just going to briefly introduce the panelists and then we'll go through each uh, panelist's views for about three minutes each. And then we'll come back again with their views in the second round. We're also joined by Anil Advani. How are you, Anil? Excellent, excellent. Sorry, I had some trouble dialing in, but I'm glad to be here. Yeah, I know it is a little uh, yeah tedious at times, so that's fine. So I'm going to introduce uh, everybody just briefly. And um, in fact, I'm going to do it one by one so that we can save time. And uh, the first speaker of the day is going to be Vijay Rajendran, who is a corporate growth strategist. And he is part of a 500 startups venture which, as we discussed, Vijay, has gone up to 2,500 uh, startups now and is an expert in early stage investment, partnerships, venture capital, building startup ecosystems. And he's based in the U.S. with uh, fully from Georgetown University and the McDonough School of Business in the Bay Area at the moment. Vijay, why don't you start with your views on the subject? Because it's a short, snappy session. We'll keep it to three minutes each in the beginning. Vijay, over to you. Super. Thank you so much, Vic. And, and uh, it's a pleasure to be on this panel with uh, you know just such a, a distinguished collection of, uh, of, of leaders. Uh, so 500 startups, as Vic pointed out, you know, is uh, a, a very large, a very active uh, global uh, venture capital firm. And you know what we recognize is there's so much more uh, to what startups need and what the uh, the world needs. Than just capital, you know there is knowledge, network, and expertise, and uh, the formula for success combines you know all of those things, uh, and and uh, together uh, can create thriving uh, ecosystems. And when we think about our mission, uh, it's not just uh, investment for investment's sake. We certainly uh, think about it as you know what does it take to promote um, and have thriving ecosystems and entrepreneurship. And, and so what we've taken on in, in our approach and uh, seen be successful in many places around the world is uh, an approach that, uh, that integrates uh, acceleration. Uh, that's very much part of our identity and our roots, particularly here uh, in, in Silicon Valley where I'm based. Uh, but we know like is part of uh, sometimes a missing ingredient in other ecosystems or around the world. And uh, certainly in, in India, you have you know, one of the most like special, uh, you know, environments and, and ecosystems for creating unicorns. There's seems like there's one born every week, or uh, or decacorns now, right? But uh, there is so much more untapped potential, and so uh, much more that can happen that is going to require uh, certain things, uh, and that is um, customer development, uh, sales acceleration, um, understanding uh, how to. Uh, to unlock, uh, you know, downstream capital, and this is really important for those people who might be overlooked or underestimated, perhaps underrepresented in the, the startup ecosystem. And so that's a, a big theme for us: is uh, the the future of uh, of a startup ecosystem has to include, you know, some element of diversity and inclusion and thinking about where there is uh, an, an underestimated like group. Um, perhaps very early uh, in, and uh, less obvious uh, to like the, the, the typical um, formula for what is uh, a successful uh, you know, startup. So that, that's a little bit about how we think and our philosophy. Uh, and in terms of like our uh, role in the Indian ecosystem, we've invested in dozens of startups. Many of them have traditionally come from uh, from India and, and joined us in it's like Silicon Valley and elsewhere and we've used our, our different uh, funds to and, and accelerated programs to uh, make those startups successful uh, but we think the next chapter is really different and this next decade 
uh, involves uh, a lot more like hands-on and direct, uh, both investment and mentoring and support uh, to accelerate those founders. Thank you, Vijay. Wonderful inputs and uh, very disciplined. I must say a good start with a three-minute intervention. Absolutely spot on. I will come back to you. Uh, I'm going to go to Mark Verissimo next. Mark has 40 years of experience in the entrepreneurial ecosystem. His experience includes the markets in the US, Europe, Israel, China, and India. He spent 24 of his 40 years with Silicon Valley Bank. Mark, over to you to talk about the ecosystem. Yeah, well, certainly starting in 1981, um, even in Silicon Valley, there really wasn't much of an ecosystem. It was just the beginning of the real professionalism of venture capital and we started to see more money come into the space and do it. So back then it was very ad hoc. Um, CEOs would know each other, CFOs would know each other, and and the VCs would try to do you know some limited things. And certainly what I saw over the years is much more of an institutionalization of it. Uh, the one point I know this this topic was talking about government help. Um, there was no government help, um, and in fact the the community actually didn't want government help. Uh, so it was very much doing it themselves. And what it, what it turned into be, whether it's service providers, whether it's law, accounting firms at the time that weren't incubators, um, debt providers, all attempted to build community in some way, having topics and bringing people together to talk about specific issues, trying to bring CEOs together to talk about their issues, try to have forms for CFOs, and um, that 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 started to become more and more important over time. And so now when you look out there, you see, well, now you have full-fledged incubators um, and, um, and other um, assets that the early entrepreneurs just didn't have. Looking across the countries, you know, India, I, I first went to India in the year 2000. And uh, my last trip was when I retired from Silicon Valley Bank, so it was 2016. And over that 16 years, I watched India go from kind of what I saw in 1981, more towards where the community was maybe in the late 90s, where there started to be more networking, more things going on. And now since then, I think it's because I keep in touch with um, Alteria Capital, Andre's firm that does debt financing, and he's very intent on building building community there. So I see India just, you know, probably a little bit behind where Silicon Valley Bank, uh, Silicon Valley is, but not much. Um, in talking to the issue about, and there's certainly been much more emphasis in the U.S., the Valley, about inclusion diversity. Because the thing about the Valley is that it's always been driven by immigrants. Even when you go back to Intel, you know, the early status, you know, you had first generation and then. Some cases it was like Eastern Europeans escaping communism, coming over to the United States and seeing opportunity. And you continue to see that through the 80s and 90s and, you know, to today. Um, and now if you look at, I've talked to, you know, multiple venture capitalists, and you look at the majority of their CEOs or founding teams are Asian and Indian. And that's the driver. But you are seeing more attempts by the community to say, okay, are there women entrepreneurs out there that are being overlooked? Are there underrepresented minorities that are being um, overlooked? And how can we help, you know, help do that? Because I know at Silicon Valley Bank, we're attempting to do some things on education and being a pipeline um, primed. Right. Thank you, Mark. Uh, that was well said as well. And uh, obviously, a wealth of experience, uh, if I can use the term wealth in this context. Yeah. yeah. Super. So I'm going to Divyang next. And uh, Divyang is an advisor and operator in the early stage ventures of technology ecosystems. He's worked for various organizations, but most notably for Central Square Foundation, a venture philanthropy organization investing in early stage education in India. Divyang started his career in management consulting in New York, worked at Booz and Company, and then at J.P. Morgan Chase in his early years. Divyang, over to you for your thoughts. Thank you, Vivek, and uh, you know, great to great to be here. Great to meet all of you. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll 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 talk about a couple of things. Uh, you know, one 
Um, you know, one thing, as, as Mark mentioned regarding the government, you know, my experience has centered, uh, or at least the beginning of my, um, you know, venture investing um, slash startup uh, career was, uh, was spent at, uh, you know, Central Square Foundation, which is a social entrepreneurship, um, you know, enabler. In fact, uh, uh, Vijay, it's very similar to, uh, you know, what 500 startups and Y Combinator uh, do for, uh, you know, for-profit startups, right? Like, or, or reg, you know, regular startups for 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 want of a better term. Uh, I mean, we tried uh, to do the same uh, in India for uh, social entrepreneurs, and and um, you know, in 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 some ways, uh, uh, the ecosystem there is uh, very uh, very less developed compared to um, you know compared to the startup ecosystem in general, right? And and mentoring, uh, which is the subject of this session, can be very uh, helpful, and 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 you know, part of it is obviously capital, which is uh, which is not very easily available in the social entrepreneurship world, especially for problems that uh, you know either are not very clearly in the impact investing bucket or are not very clearly in the philanthropy bucket, right? So there's there's the middle zone where there's some um, business form that could work out, but uh, but not be uh, you know competitive in terms of returns with with private equity or venture capital. So that that sort of catalytic catalytic capital is where um, you know, we tried uh, to create a bunch of things. In fact, one of the things we did was uh, we we were able to bring Khan Academy to India and then translate it into many you know different languages. And uh, you know, partnered with Sal Khan and and now with I mean, since I left with Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and Google.org, and you know, it's taken a life of its own. Um, and one of the things I was involved in was actually developing an accelerator um, for uh, Central Square. You know, very similar to 500 startups. So uh, bringing in similar sort of support services. Uh, to the social entrepreneurship world, uh, you know, the, the regular ones being for capital and uh, and mentorship, but even, you know, things such as, uh, you know, how do you measure impact, right? There, there was no template uh, and it's much harder said, uh, it's, my, you know, it's much easier than done. Uh, so we were able to create an ecosystem around it. So uh, that was that was an interesting, uh, you know, really good time. And, um, and, and we were able to sort of create a... a um, an ecosystem of uh, of mentorship in that uh, respect. But the other thing, you know, that I've been I've been looking at, uh, which um, you know points back to both points that Vijay and Mark mentioned, were uh, were a lot of the value added mentoring services that have sort of cropped up in the general you know VC ecosystem. And my interest began at Central Square, but then uh, actually I've written a lot about uh, three specific models. Uh, you know, one is one being uh, the entrepreneurship and residence model, EIR, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. The other, you know, being uh, the venture studio model. You know, venture studios have started cropping up in the last, call it, five to seven years, right, as, as uh, you know, a lot of value add that, that they can provide. And, and in the beginning, um, you know, take the risk, uh, some of the risk away from uh, from starting something. And the third, which is not as relevant, but, but equally, if not more interesting, is entrepreneurship through acquisition. Which sort of falls in the search fund, you know, domain where uh, you you buy existing businesses and 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 help them grow. Uh, so anyway, I just I, you know wanted to give a, a background uh, because I know we, you know there's there's multiple rounds uh, in this session. So so happy to talk about any of these uh, in more detail. Uh, you know, whatever would be most useful. Thank you, thank you, Divyang, also for sticking to the time. And yes, not multiple, but two rounds. Definitely, we we'll come back to you once more. And uh, well said, you're also in the U.S. Anil Arbani is also in the U.S. But before Anil, I'll go to Gaurav Chaturvedi, who's in Bangalore. And uh, he's with K Capital. He's formerly from, I mean, he's an IIT Bombay graduate. Worked in uh, entrepreneurship and he's uh, turned into a VC investor. Now he's a partner at K Capital. He's into seed early stage investing at K Capital. And especially his interests are in edtech among uh, other fields. So Gaurav, over to you. Thanks. Thanks, Vivek. Uh, uh, great to be here. Thanks for having me. So first, a quick, quick uh, background before start, before joining K as uh, as a VC investor, where we do typically early stage technology investing, typically seed or PCD way. I was an entrepreneur, ran my tech company for good 10 years. A venture funded company exited it after it was uh, acquired. And that's why I've had a chance to be on both sides of the tables, first as an entrepreneur and now as an investor. And that's why this uh, uh, this topic of today of mentoring of Indian startups actually resonates with me a lot. Well, I've seen firsthand how important it is for a startup in the early days to have for a mentorship. 
And without spending a lot of time into this, I'll just highlight two points why I think it is uh, very critical. Some of the points have already been uh, highlighted by my co-panelists over there. Number one, which is a very philosophical and a larger point, uh, entrepreneurship is a very lonely journey. You might have, you might have your uh, investor, your family, your co-founder, everybody, but you still need someone who you can go to, who you trust fully at any point of time, be it for uh, uh, business advice or a lot of times, any personal advice that you need as a, as a business leader. And in that lonely journey, a mentor can be priceless. And number two, which is a lot more tactical, mistakes in the early days of, of startups can be very, uh, very, very costly. You don't have resources, you don't have time, you don't have domain knowledge. You know about only your domain. And at that point of time, either you can learn from your own mistakes or you can take advice from a mentor who has gone through the same journey or who has a uh, lot more comfort. Right. So that's why I, I strongly believe that mentorship for Indian startups is very, very uh, critical. Now, the ecosystem in the last few years has, has uh, matured a lot. Uh, entrepreneurs today have a lot more access to mentors compared to what it was 10 years back, 15 years back. You have uh, great angels, VCs spend a lot of time in mentoring. You have other programs, accelerators, which have come in. But are we there yet? I don't think so. There's still a long way to go. And I think the core of the thing is that we have a lot of people who want to and can mentor uh, the startups, who can help startups. We have organizations, we have industry bodies, and even government is doing a lot of stuff in that. Corporates are doing a lot of stuff. Government is running a startup mentorship program. What is needed is a more structured push wherein uh, there, there can be one or two bodies and government take a lead in, in there who involve broader uh, uh, audience from the ecosystem, make a push for it and build it like a critical infrastructure, which is going to be needed. The number of startups which are coming now in India has dramatically increased. The number used to be hundreds every year. Now it has gone to thousands. And I strongly believe that mentorships and a mentorship facilitation platform or ecosystem is going to be a critical infrastructure to bridge that gap. Thank you very much, Gaurav. Uh, well said. I absolutely agree. I'll have some own uh, views later. But for now, we go to Anil Advani, whose profile actually reads as if this session was built around his uh, career. And uh, all of you actually fit the bill so well. Anil Advani is a founder member and legal advisor at Accelerate. At Accelerate. And he's also the founder of Inventus Law which has a battery of bright lawyers. He's an advisor, lawyer, angel investor, and mentor to early stage startup founders in Silicon Valley and across the world. Here you go, Anil, with your ideas on how to mentor Indian startups. Yeah, I think we'll go into the... And Vivek, thanks for having me. This is, this is fantastic, and I'm very privileged to be with this great group of speakers and, and sharing our mutual knowledge. Uh, I would say when I, I, the, in the three minutes, I just want to set the agenda or the stage for hopefully we'll have more time to go into more substantive discussion. But from my perspective, and I've been doing it like a lot of you guys, uh, I've been doing it for 21 years from Silicon Valley, but I actually left my big firm, big law firm to be able to do it myself where I can actually fly in and out. Uh, but going back to Silicon Valley Bank, I've had a long history and relationship with the bank. In fact, I met some of those guys on Monday for, for lunch. And one of my earliest sort of triggers for thinking about how India is emerging was actually my friends Ash and Suresh launched the Silicon Valley Bank office yeah. in Bangalore. And when I went there, it was typical Silicon Valley style in the rooftop. We had a big party, all the VCs and, and uh, E4E and all of the so mine, uh, mine tree, all of these guys, founders, young founders at that time were all, you know, there was a lot of uh, buzz around it. So that got me excited about looking at India more carefully. And this was 2004. So we didn't in Silicon Valley, nobody was talking about India other than outsourcing for development you know, services. But I, I, I mean, and so what government can do is actually accelerate this collaboration of organizations, players from Silicon Valley, other ecosystems, the 500 startups, uh, and not inhibit that, right? So the regulatory aspects and, and various I agree with the previous speakers that government has, I, I say this all the time, government has no business being in business. Uh, but the one thing government can do is remove the roadblocks, right? In the sense of, I, I, I wouldn't want to speak for SVB, but a lot of these other players that have come in, they face regulatory hurdles, legal hurdles, uh, whether as a financial institution, whether you can do this or not. Clearly, the, the, 
the scales are tipped in favor of domestic players we've seen the paytm story play out we'll see we'll continue we'll we, we'll continue to see the reliance story play out so that the government has to be committed to a full you know fair playing field allowing the world players to come and be able to you know m- nurture the market for everyone so I mean, obviously banks and, and investors are not coming as a charity but it has to be a level playing field so that we can continue to nurture that remains my biggest concern that at any time the government might change course and you know start shutting things down or bringing in protectionism because of their you know domestic policies and requirements so that always has we've seen the movie play out multiple times if you grow up in india in the 70s 80s not to date myself so i think that's why i want to set up the field and and the other thing i would say is from my perspective what i've seen is these that which is the really i don't know if i'm o- o- over my 3 minutes but i'll do it very quickly i think now we look at india especially emergence of the technology startups as two parts right one is the domestic indian market and the emergence of the zomato ipo and paytm is in line and i expect that a lot of other domestic players that are focusing on the domestic market which means that the domestic market technology you know market for technology product services has matured to a point where you can be a 10 billion dollars just based on the indian market right that's fantastic there's also very sort of parallel emergence which has been fantastic for my practice <laughs> many of you here in silicon valley which is the emergence of strong technology players from india coming to the us setting up you know base here becoming global company so i think those are two parallel processes and both are exciting and if you're looking at india you should be looking at both these opportunities they will emerge and, and converge and they'll continue to play their own roles but it is very fantastic for people you know like us who are involved in that ecosystem thank you very much anil very well said with a wealth of experience and insight and in fact it's a real pleasure to be a part of this panel because all of you have fulfill your mandate already in those 3 minutes which is amazing to see how well you've spoken and as a speaker myself and as a former ias officer the indian administrative service i have met across the board many 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 entrepreneurs and people trying to make a dent make a mark uh, but uh, i personally have one input at least that the government needs to as anil said stay out of the way and at times uh, that inspector raj as we call it in india has been the bane of industry the ease of doing business has been improving slightly with technology interventions but still not up there and you know it's that trepidation of entering a government office that that uh, that young guy from harvard he's come representing a big uh, or a startup company and you know he, he doesn't understand uh, much about the place and suddenly he has to go through the ropes and uh, after a year or so he's been through the grind and he's learned the pluses and the minuses but i think i think the government needs to make the right noises create the right ecosystem stay out of the way intervene when required be available i think uh, it's like being a parent i mean your parents are there for you right you don't need to go to them for every little thing but whenever you have a problem you go to the parents and the government should act a little bit like that but not like big brother as it does in some Uh, systems and countries so i'm going to go back to all of you for um, that 3 uh, or maybe 2 and a half minutes each now uh, we're making it more exciting and uh, so what we're going to do is now perhaps talk about one thing that the government or the industry or mentors should be doing which they're not doing right now which can add value to the ecosystem in india especially the indian entrepreneur looking forward to a smooth journey how can he be facilitated or she be facilitated and mentored and helped a little more so that one thing which needs to be done i'm going with the same batting order we have a very good opener in vijay rajendran go over to you vijay uh, thank you vivek and there's just so much to respond and react to here from what has been said um i'm not sure how to keep it to a few minutes so I'll, i'll i'll do my best i i think um uh, first of all you know as as anil pointed out uh there are like many dimensions to what we're seeing you know this this isn't like you know a singular trend and if i can add a a third or a fourth one there's um an an important thing happening in terms of the different like levels of uh startup uh formation and growth at tier 1 versus tier 2 versus tier 3 cities um you know i i talk to to friends and colleagues and they say you know 10 years ago no one would have uh talked about uh, accelerators in places like goa and jaipur and and so forth but now it's obvious that there are are, are talented people and 
um, and, and good ideas and, and startups forming in, in places uh, like that. Uh, so and it's important to recognize that maybe this is a policy issue, is that these, these types of cities and other uh, ecosystems are uh, working at a different speed and maybe at a different level of uh, talent and, and capital formation and things of that nature um, as opposed to the more like typical tier one cities that are um, you know are obvious and um, in clear clusters so that so if there's a, a rule for for government it is to to think about you know what is it it take to um, uh, help direct uh, capital or at least remove the, the barriers for for capital and for uh, for business to form very early because you know I mean to the next point if it's um, if it's intimidating for someone from, as, as you put it, from, from Harvard to go into a big government office and, and start uh, getting things done, what does that look like for the guy from Kanpur or Chennai? You know, I mean, it's, it, it's also, uh, you know, something that has to be made uh, accessible, easy, uh, and, uh, and simple in order to uh, form business and, and, and get things done in a, a, a way. way. Uh, so I, so I uh, definitely anchor on that. And then when I think also about this, you know, uh, this difference of experience and difference of readiness, perhaps, between tier one, tier two, and tier three ecosystems, then like the level of mentorship and, um, and what it takes to be ready looks different. So if there are, is a role for government, it is, you know, equity free grants and, uh, and support for, um, uh, for the, uh, participants in the uh, in this you know uh, new startup uh, ecosystem, let's say in a tier three city, to go and participate in a world class ecosystem, and and to find ways for for folks to uh, to pull themselves up, even if they they just don't happen to be lucky to uh, find themselves automatically uh, in um, a uh, world class uh, startup cluster. So I'll I'll stop there. Wonderfully well said, Vijay. Now we're getting really into the meat of this topic. And uh, I think it's very difficult to do justice in such a short span, but I think we're going pretty well. I've seen Mark smiling a lot uh, during when other people were speaking, especially when yeah. his bank was mentioned. So over to you, Mark. Yeah. yeah. Um, maybe I'll do one and a half. I think the half would be in relation to the government is um, well, either getting out of the way or at least helping to set the table so people can take advantage. Uh, Silicon Valley Bank, we went into India, we wanted to do business in India. And literally within six months of getting into India with a finance company, which we thought we then could get deposits and move that way, they changed the rules. So all of a sudden we were not able to get deposits. So we're going to find everything on equity and we were doing debt financing. Then we wanted to become a bank um, and a bank focused on the entrepreneurial ecosystem as we were in the U.S. And it just wasn't possible because they put all these requirements on top of this. Um, all these other funding, we were going to have to fund agriculture, rural, all these other things. And, um, and so what happened eventually is the bank decided to my, I opposed it. It was underneath my umbrella, but they decided to pull out of India um, for the time being, because it just wasn't fertile ground to be able to do business. And so we put our efforts in China, Europe, Israel, um, some in Latin America, and India not. I still think it's a big mistake, but I could see why they did it. Um, now, having said that, my one issue would be for the entrepreneurs is to think global. Um, what I find is India is a large market, and so the entrepreneurs you know, tend to focus on a large domestic market versus an, versus an entrepreneur in Israel with a small domestic market, they immediately go global and they're immediately, they're understanding how do I participate in the global marketplace? When we compared India and China, China Chinese companies were much more global in their outlook and driving to be global. Indian companies we found were much more domestically focused. And I think when you look at India, if you get a product and a, and a business model that works, you're probably going to have a pretty good cost advantage over most places in the world, particularly the developed world. And so I think that's an undertapped opportunity to say, how do I take my product, 
which I can do very economically here in the India and how I transfer that product globally. So that'd be the one, if I had to pick one area, that'd be an area that mentorship and helping would be a big benefit to companies. Thank you, Mark. You certainly made your mark in those very few words. Well said, yeah. well done. And I totally agree with that global vision, which is very essential for everybody to have at the start. Divyang, I'm going to you. And I, among the other things, if you can also just uh, touch upon the social entrepreneurship a little more, because that seems to be unique and uh, much required. Thanks, Vivek. So, okay, so I have I had one point that I uh, that I wanted to say before, and then I'll I'll add something about social entrepreneurship. The the, fir- the, the first point, you know, in, in in my experience, the you know mentorship tends to work best when there's a natural fit, uh, you know, both between the entrepreneur and the mentor, and nothing is being forced. The issue with that is that. Uh, you know, it's it's much easier to find natural mentors from, uh, you know, similar uh, industries. You know, someone who looks like you, talks like you, and that leaves out a, a large portion of entrepreneurs, right? So, as an example, you know, uh, it, it leaves out uh, uh, you know female entrepreneurs, right? It's not it's not you know uh, uh, that needs to be. There needs to be more intent upon upon doing that, right? Uh, from an industry perspective, uh, you know, India has. Um, if you look at a lot of the unicorns, especially ones that have been started by Indians in the U.S., like a lot of them are focused on technology, especially on you know enterprise SaaS, uh, and and there's a vibrant ecosystem within that. But there's not as much of a vibrant ecosystem in the consumer, uh, you know, segment. Uh, or, or even in the you know fintech segment, right? Uh, areas that are uh, that are massive. So, um, if there and and I don't know the answer to this, but uh, you know having mentors across the board from an industry perspective, from a gender perspective, from an overall diversity perspective, uh, I think makes the ecosystem and the strength of the ecosystem more. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot more depth to it, right? Uh, and I think that's 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 the one point I would I would want to mention on the social entrepreneurship side. Um, and and you know maybe linking it to the government part, you know a lot a lot of the focus in India is always on sort of programmatic outcomes and programmatic solutions. So you know let's let's focus on things where we can impact the largest number of people, and that you know that obviously is something that's extremely important to do. But in addition to that, there are some uh, solutions that require a lot of time, and in the beginning, uh, you know will. Uh, will not so, so uh, sorry. But very quickly, as an example, right? Like a midday meal program impacts millions of kids every day, and that's that's extremely powerful. But at the same time, there's some solutions that scale really well, but require that incubation sort of gestation period, right? For which there are very little resources. So, as an example, if you focus on a on a principal training program, right? I mean, it's it's one of the best indicators of of learning outcomes of kids, which is how well the principals run the school. But there's very little emphasis on that because the results are not really visible uh, in the same way. Right? You can't say that, okay, we put in X number of hours and now learning outcomes have improved the next day. So focusing on these kind of out, uh, and, and I can rattle off so many other things like that, focusing on these uh, you know, initiatives that, uh, uh, that, that require a longer time and probably don't have an e- a very easy way to measure things long term are very important. That's the other point I'd mentioned. Sorry, I went a little bit over. Thank you. No, no, it was very impressive. In fact, what you said about midday meals and LLOs, very much resonating with my experiences as well. And you're totally right about the fit with the mentor as well. And we haven't got a female entrepreneur on this panel or mentor on this panel. So Frank needs to be informed about that for the next time. We need to have diversity. Uh, But uh, otherwise, I think it's an amazing panel and we have great diversity and experience. Over to you, Gaurav, now, and then Anil. Gaurav. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Vivek. So I'll I'll take two quick points. One, uh, uh, I want to build on what Divyang just said, because exactly the same thing was going on in my mind, right? If you see the Indian startup ecosystem right now, look at the SaaS ecosystem. It's very vibrant, very, very good uh, community. And I think one uh, reason for that has been NASCOM. NASCOM from its earlier days has been uh, has been facilitating a lot, whether it was for IT services earlier, or now they work very closely with SaaS Boomi and SaaS entrepreneurs, open their expertise, their uh, mentors to them. And that's where I believe that industry bodies and corporates have a lot of role to play. Why can't other bodies build in and uh, a platform like that facilitate 
uh, mentorship by their domain experts, which helps, helps the overall ecosystem to flourish. Right now, there are a few companies which interact with startups and ecosystem in a structured way. Companies like NetApp have been running accelerators, companies like Flipkart or Amazon have startup mentorship program. But a lot more can be done here. Why, why can't the other unicorns, other industry, other leaders, other leading companies have a structured program for, for startups? And I think that would be a game changer. And second, again, uh, taking a leap from, from what everybody said and what the Grand also said right now. A lot of access to mentorship right now in the ecosystem is, is for, for only a few. It is not diverse enough. It is not inclusive enough. It's only for primarily people who have been uh, venture funded or have gone through accelerator or who are well connected. But it needs to uh, broaden. It needs to broaden to thousands of other entrepreneurs who don't have this access. And that's where I think the government can actually play a big role. Although I agree totally with, with the sentiment that government should uh, keep out of, of uh, business, be a facilitator, not an inhibitor. But in this case, government can actually uh, democratize something like this. So government, for example, runs this uh, Startup Mentorship Connect program through Startup India. But how many people know about that? How many mentors know about that? How many startups know about that? Government actually can push a lot in that direction, uh, make it a lot more inclusive, uh, get get uh, people in like um, people in uh, this panel, get uh, other ecosystem partners, get VCs involved, get other angel investors involved, get other uh, leaders from PSUs, bureaucrats, everybody involved in, in a push for this. And that way they can really democratize this access to mentorship, which again could be priceless. Thank you, Gaurav. Thank you very much. Very well said. Absolutely true. We join. We are joined by a wonderful audience as well. I see chairmen, founders, CEOs, and they've been coming in and out. Obviously, they have uh, 10 channels to choose from out here, but uh, good to have them. Anil Advani, you have the last word or the second last word before me and uh, off you go. Yeah, I'll use your cricket analogy. I guess I have the last over and I have to hit six to win, right? I mean, <laughs> along with you. Yeah, uh, absolutely. But I have a lot to talk about. I will try to crystallize it two and a half minutes uh, and, and a lot of responses to you know what I've heard. Uh, Mark, I think you should look into I mean, it. seems like you've got somewhat disconnected with what's happening in India, to be honest, because Indian founders are becoming global faster than Israeli and Chinese. I, I represent more than yeah. easily more than 100 Indian companies setting up in the U.S., all of them, almost all of them raising some sort of venture money, uh, venture investments and going in the U.S. Gaurav rightly said that's driven by the SaaS sort of revolution uh, from Chennai, Bangalore, SaaS, Bhumi. Uh, I'm speaking actually on Wednesday and Thursday at the NASCOM InnoTrack, which is, to Gaurav's point, a great program bringing 30, 40 founders every year from India that are pre-selected to be able to grow a build, you know, global brand. So, so that is happening. I think people... Yeah. I just Good. it's happening in sort of in stealth mode, which is great, but but it's actually all around and, and you will see my dream is we will when you drive around 101 and 280, you will see in company brands mm. and, and products that you start using. So it's happening. It's here uh, and get ready. <laughs> you know, the other thing I would say is in India itself, right? I mean, we will always I always think about what's happening from India into US and then what's happening in India, India, India. I think I'm into again, I would not dispute, but uh, what I would uh, share my perspective that I I think there is a lot of localization, localization happening in India. I have a client that's actually creating sort, sort of a WhatsApp for Gujarati, you know, and uh, there are Gujarati entrepreneurs. He's in Baroda and, and some successful entrepreneurs that are funny because, you know, I mean, the Gujarati people want their own, you know, their own jokes that they can share in their language, right? Similarly, I would expect that will happen in other languages, other regions. Uh, there's a founder in, in Nagpur, I think, that's solving for water delivery problem. And I asked him, like, why are you doing this? This, you know, a big engineering sort of degree. And But he said that is actually a real problem. He's solving for that. And that itself could be a big business. And it's for people like Gaurav and Sasha, obviously, you know, old friend of mine. But folks like you have to go down to Nagpur, look at what's happening and invest and, and build. I mean, and I, I do expect government to do it. Now, so going back to, I guess, the topic of the day, the government, and this is my favorite topic. And I've had lots of discussions even with Arun Jetli, who passed away, unfortunately, and his response was sort of classic, which is, I asked him, right, Startup India, and, and I'll talk about my punchline, but Startup India, and sir, you know, what happens with Startup India, you know, for all these great investments, you're talking about the, at that time when he came in in 2017 with Mo, Prime Minister Modi, Boeing will go in, you know, with $2 billion, they can call, he was saying, they can call us, get it done. And I told him, sir, my clients are $5 million, $10 million funded companies. They still have to go and deal with the Babus. 
एंड दिस रिस्पॉन्स वॉज आपको समझना चाहिए कि इंडियन ब्यूरोसी विद इंडियन ब्यूरोसी वी कैन नॉट एज पॉलिटिक्स पॉलिटिशियंस इंटरफियर दैट एंड विवेक एज एन आई पी एस ऑफिसर आई एम श्योर यू कैन रिलेट टू दैट दैट टेल्स यू एवरी थिंग राइट सो दैट टेल्स यू दैट यू नो एज मच एज द इंटेंट माइट बी देयर it it doesn't matter to anybody especially an entrepreneur who has to execute really fast speed competing with others if that's the excuse and that's what in reality you have to deal with and and the plus line is that you know in 1997 i i was at georgetown so i'm also an alma mater there in my masters of law program i wrote a paper on indian telecom and try had been set up and that was my thesis you know my lm thesis and i did a lot of research about try uh, try the chairman all these board they were i also did an internship at the federal bureau uh, fcc's international bureau so i was interacting and getting information and it was clear to me that they were bureaucrats right and i ended up writing in my paper and this was the punch line that the government has actually in this sort of is 97 i believe this still applies and god of you shouldn't have talked about startup india because that boils my blood and I, this relates to <laughs> that i i wrote about the fact that the government is building a ferrari that can run 500 miles but it puts it on top of a bullet cart and then keeps asking the question why does it not you know race at 500 miles so i think the bureauc if you are serious about whoever is listening if anybody is if you are serious about startup india don't put bureaucrats who are well dressed well spoken but have never started a company that's the failure right don't don't build regulations that a startup founder has to hire a set of lawyers and an accountants and and spend 6 months just trying to figure out how the that grant of 50000 will actually come to him or not right if you're serious about it do that if you just want to you know keep talking about it you know i'm not part of it you know so that with that i would end back to you thank you thank you anil where you all done all of you stuck to the time and uh, came up with great inputs great insights anil this was fantastic you mentioned uh, a uh, venerable politician who is no, no longer with us you mentioned the bureaucracy and bureaucracy itself is a word that has obstacle in the definition but uh, some of us have been doing a bit in various ways to help the ecosystem nascom was mentioned and uh, i think nascom grow from uh, very nascent uh, levels tai has done a great job in india as well at various cities i so i would say even cii asocham fiki and uh, others but you know there there's only so much that the ecosystem can do the the startup guy and mentor are uh, their relationship is the key and as a mentor to some ceos young ceos now i i can see that there's a lot of talent a lot of energy a lot of enthusiasm and verve and lots can happen but we need to have the right role definition the government needs to know what to do the mentor needs to be available and not interfere etc mentorship is not about coaching there's a distinct difference between the two so we really need to understand uh, what is um, required i think we we could have gone on for the whole day and um, uh, frank has enough talent uh, horasis has enough talent in this room to fill up all the sessions i think that's my compliment to you all thank you for joining and i'm sure this video will be available on uh, youtube and uh, frank would send it out to us why don't you share it with all prospective mentees and others and uh, share your ideas and i shall make sure that uh, the government also gets a glimpse of it thank you very much and uh, let's smile for a picture i think uh, a message says your time has elapsed but you can stay as long as you want i don't know what that means but i'm <laughs> sure we'll get a picture <laughs> screenshot okay we go all right thank you very much gentlemen and great to have met you again